9th of August and we watched Chris looking really nervous. Let's talk about those developments. This is a law firm that is going to be working with Chris Watts. This was confirmed by Lana Oriani on Critical Case Channel. I will leave a link to that live stream in the description box. CDT also did a good synopsis of that live stream. So I'll leave that in the description box as well. Please don't contact these guys to abuse them or to ask inappropriate questions. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's um, in anybody's best interest to do that. And this is alleged. It's not clear exactly what they will be doing for Chris. It is assumed that they will be working with Chris on his 35C. You know, the current information is somewhat brief. So again, please don't contact them to harass them you know, in any way. I don't think that's fair. So who are these people? Um, Fisher and Burry Alson. If we look in the contacts, they do have an office in Denver, Colorado, and they also have an office in New York. They are concerned with civil rights law and they've took part a number of high profile cases, I believe, and they're also criminal defense lawyers. So they pride themselves on fighting for clients facing serious criminal charges. With decades of combined litigation experience, the firm provides a level of advocacy that goes beyond the courtroom, assisting clients with potential collateral consequences stemming from their legal problems. So they deal with um, a whole range of, you know, the most serious crimes that you can think of, although they do some pro bono cases, um, it is alleged that Chris Watts' case won't be one of those. It will be paid for, and apparently, allegedly, an upfront returner has been received to these attorneys by Chris Watts or Chris Watts' family. So it does look, just by the current information that's available, it does look like there will be perhaps a 35C filed to get Chris's case reviewed. Now, I've made videos about Chris's 35C. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a legal expert. I can only kind of look at the information that's available on the internet. A 35C is unlikely, actually, unlikely to get upheld. There are a number of reasons why a 35C could be allowed. Um, so this would give Chris's case a, a completely new review. If he wants to go down the route of unfair legal counsel or new material, new evidence that wasn't available at the time that he pled guilty, he's on pretty shaky ground based on the information that I've got access to. But we'll see. We'll wait and see at this moment in time. The case is closed. Chris pled guilty to all charges. But I think something that Lana got right in the live stream with Critical K is that he pled guilty to all charges without pleading guilty and explaining for each charge what his role was. It was only in February 2019 at the Wisconsin confession when unusually, I mean, it's it's unheard of. I don't know of another case where, where this has happened, that after a case has closed, the police officers involved in the investigation, so that's um, Detective Baumhover, who was the lead investigator, Tammy Lee, Agent Tammy Lee, and Agent Graham Corder, actually went to Wisconsin to Dodge Correctional, where Chris is housed, and he's housed there permanently. However, as an aside, he will have to go back to Colorado um, if this 35C is, is filed and upheld. He will have to go back there and to deal with any, any consequences of it. So, yeah, they went there in February 2019 and apparently got a full confession from Chris about how he murdered his family, how he disposed of them and exactly what happened. But is it possible and this is a speculation that is kind of doing the rounds on YouTube at the moment. Is it possible 
that Chris is going to renege on that confession? And is he going to frame other people? Is he going to give another version of the story? Even if he does, the Inagon, I guess. However, that information was available at the time that he pled guilty. So the 35C is not an appeal. An appeal is where you appeal to a higher court to get your case reheard. Whereas a 35C is a review, but it goes back to the court that issued the sentence with the same judge. It's not as easy as it sounds and it's certainly not a given and it's actually quite unlikely that this will be upheld but we'll see but if it is let's just imagine the scenario and the case is reopened isn't that a big problem for the evidence that was collected at the time so let's just address that before I close off this video let's consider the information that's available in the discovery for those of you who don't know what the discovery is, it's all the evidence that the prosecution collected that supposedly proves Chris's guilt. And to put a plea deal in that Chris did, supposedly to remove the possibility of the death sentence, those discovery files were meant to contain the evidence. I've read the discovery and I've also received all of the supplementary files or the body cam, everything that's available. I received that from Weld County and I've looked at those. I've looked at them again and again and again. Now, there's a lot redacted. So there could be information that the prosecution have that for whatever reason, the DA, the DA's office decided not to make public. For people like me who are, you know, like armchair detectives, I guess, <laughs> we know we've not got the full story. And indeed, some of the reports given by the police officers are inaccurate. They're misleading. Not on purpose, I suspect. In my humble opinion, the evidence that was collected and that is available in the discovery isn't more than circumstantial evidence. That's a shame because I think if the investigation had been done from day one, from the 13th of August, as we're seeing here, we're seeing the body cam footage from Officer Coonrod right at the beginning of the investigation when they thought Shanann and the girls were missing. But they should have been open from the very moment the Officer Coonrod and then other officers, uh, Detective Baumhofer, turned up in the afternoon. Chris was behaving so oddly, so nervously, unlike somebody whose wife and daughters were missing. At Th that point, it was clear the officers were suspicious. They were being given information that they could have acted upon to just open the possibility up to making this a criminal investigation, not just one of a missing pregnant woman and her two daughters. Closing off the house, getting Chris away on the 13th or possibly the 14th. Look, the dog search, I put a lot of value in. I know some people think that the handlers weren't very good. Again, in my humble opinion, I think that dog search was one of the, the key parts, the key investigative route that they should have gone down. I made a video about this recently. Jane's dog, um, the Labrador, he was a search and rescue dog. He was actually trained to track. So not, not a search and rescue dog that, that searches for air scents. So any scent, they'll follow any scent that isn't their handler's scent. He's a tracker dog. He's given a scent. That's why the officers, when they went to the house and Chris let them in and voluntarily agreed for the dogs to be able to search the house, they looked for scents. They looked for items of clothing or shoes or something that only the girls and only Shanann would have touched. And that Labrador would have been given those scents. He would have been given those scents to sniff. 
and he learns those scents very very quickly because that's what he's trained should have a trauma tag so around did so it's actually very clear to me that that area there should have been forensically tested they have very little forensic evidence the house wasn't forensically tested the basement certainly wasn't forensically tested the cadaver dog the, the german shepherd he didn't alert in the basement or the garage, but all that tells us is that there's no evidence of cadaverine. Now, you know that horrible smell that, that dead bodies give off? Cadaver dogs are trained to sniff out cadaverine. It's actually cadaverine is produced when a body dies. It's the breakdown of an amino acid called lysine. Amino acids are the constitutes of protein. So we eat amino acids and our body uses them to build protein when the body dies that lysine is kind of released and that's the horrible smell from a dead body and dogs have got such an acute sense of smell that they can alert to the scent of cadaverine even when a body has been removed days or even it is supposed that in certain circumstances weeks before so that dog didn't alert in the basement no one died in the basement but he wasn't given the opportunity to search the entire house so if he had have been maybe there would have been some evidence to prove somebody Shanann died in that house but we'll never know there was a complete lack of forensic testing the defence who um, Chris's defence team when the house was released when Chris confessed and the house was released the day after the defence team went in and actually there was a report by neighbour Nate saying there's someone in the house and um, when the officers turned up it was actually the, the defence team and they made note that there was a lack of forensic tags what evidence did they actually have other than circumstantial. Look, let's let's he had between August and November when his hearing was, he could have reneged on that initial confession and he could have forced it to go to trial. He could have pled not guilty and forced it to go to trial. If that had been the case, what evidence would the um, prosecution actually have now I'm guessing there's there's more evidence there's perhaps a lot more evidence that were collected in that three months maybe implicating other people who perhaps allegedly in my humble opinion have been protected there's obvious pieces of evidence that are missing from the discovery maybe if Chris had pled not guilty that information would have been available perhaps there is there's got to be other evidence there is other evidence for me the lack of the the initial investigation the lack of forensics is a key issue but there could be other evidence that they've collected that implicates Chris in a, a more concrete way or well and or implicates other people as well who may have assisted Chris but at th this moment in time we just don't know because the evidence isn't available what if let's just imagine the scenario what if there is enough evidence that perhaps this new firm can drag up and a 35c has to be upheld and the case is reopened isn't that going to be a big, big problem for the prosecution? Now, I'm I'm open to the possibility that people have been protected. Anadarko, where Chris worked, it's an oil company. It's now been bought out. But at the time it was Anadarko, the oil companies are always rich. They always have kind of those political ties. I'm open to the possibility that there was a cover-up of some kind I don't know what kind I can speculate on that but all of that would then have to come out into the open it remains to be seen but at the time Chris pled guilty the prosecution had a theory now what evidence they actually have to back up that theory we don't know I would like to know I would like to know very much <laughs> I really would believe me this story is not over. The case might be closed, but the story is not over. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I like to read the comments. I don't reply to a lot, but I like to read the comments. Let me know your theory, your ideas. Do you think the 35C will have a chance? I've been Michelle. 
please subscribe if you haven't done so already i'm deep into the chris watts case now so more chris watts content to come i hope you're well i'll speak to you in the next video